No thank you. This is supposed to be the father figure, but when you get vibes off of someone like you do from this guy, it's time to start asking some questions. This is 2018's The Girl in the Spider's Web. Spoiler alert, while I might give you my opinion on the film, that's no substitute for watching it yourself. Links to the film are in the description. What confirms the suspicion even more is when young Lisbeth tries to keep her sister Camilla from going over, because she knows that something's off about everything. Camilla breaks away from Lisbeth and goes over to her father. Once there, the father sits Camilla on his lap, but Lisbeth grabs her hand and takes her out of the room. As Lisbeth opens up the door to look over the icy tundra that she plans to escape in, Camilla can't bring herself to join her, and Lisbeth falls out of the doorway to the padded snow below. Years down the road, a man apologizes to a woman while eating dinner in their apartment. Just forgive me. Well, this movie isn't pulling any punches already. We've got a creepy father, a girl that would rather brave the snowy forest after falling off a cliff, and this wannabe Fifty Shades of Grey guy who beats women over dinner. I didn't read the book series, so I don't know what to expect from this, but this is way more fast-paced than I had expected. Is this how the books are? He offers the girl a drink, and he swears that he loves her. Right after his declaration, the power in the house seems to go out. But after he gets the power running again, he finds Lisbeth waiting for him in front of a statue in the living room. After he asks who she is, she pushes the statue and a tripwire hangs him from the ceiling. The woman goes to call security, but Lisbeth mentions that she's hacked into the man's account. She tells him that she'll transfer money to the two prostitutes he beat and his wife and child. The woman promptly puts the phone down, gathers her child, and leaves. After Lisbeth is done with the man, she leaves him there as he relieves himself on his face. The next day, we see Michael go to work, and Erica tries to convince him to write again. When he tries to get close to her and offer her dinner that night, she mentions that she has to eat with her husband. Is everyone in this universe cheating on someone? I feel like the only person that isn't a sexual deviant or cheater is Lisbeth. And that's only because I haven't seen her with anyone yet. Ah, I was wrong. For all I know, she's someone's wife too. The woman snoops through some personal items that are gathered by the bedside, and she spots a picture of Lisbeth and Camilla. Lisbeth tells her that her sister killed herself a few years back, and she's glad her and her father are both dead now. Soon a man calls and tells her that he has a client that's looking for her to do the impossible. We find out that her job is with Franz Balder, a scientist with the NSA. When she goes to meet Franz, she finds out that he wants her to obtain software that he had created. He tells her that what he created is an abomination, and the people he worked for are going to use it in terrible ways. She agrees to take the job, but little does she know that someone's spying on their conversation via the security cameras. When she goes to leave, a black van follows her through town. When she gets back to her room to research what Franz has made, it's basically a crazy long, sciencey sounding explanation that explains that his software would help whoever controls it have access to nuclear missiles. There, simple explanation. Meanwhile, we see Ed, who's in a very important conference, get a text, and he heads to his office at the NSA. Once there, he finds out that the file for the software is being transferred by a hacker, Lisbeth to be exact. He shuts down everything on the floor, but when he logs back into his computer, he realizes that he was too late. He traces back the footprints to Stockholm, Sweden, and there we see Lisbeth get tempted to open the software she's just stolen. Sure enough, she opens it, but she's immediately hit with a looping security question system. Eventually, she closes the computer and gets up to take a bath. Outside, the van pulls up, and Lisbeth hears glass breaking elsewhere in the house. She gets dressed to investigate, and she finds Camilla sucked up in a black bag. Turns out she was dreaming the whole time, but when she really gets out of the tub, she really is being attacked by guys with silencer pistols. That would suck to wake up from a terrible dream to realize reality is basically just as bad. When Lisbeth comes out of her safe room, her apartment's blown up by a gas leak the men set up, and she hides in the still full bathtub. Why was there water in the tub still? Do people just get out of the bath, get dressed, and leave a tub full of water for later? When she gets out of the tub, she goes to check her security system, but she can't get a match on the intruder's face. She grabs her essentials and gets out just as the police arrive. She speeds away on her bike, but a chase quickly ensues. After she makes it to the other side of the river, she looks back at her apartment as it goes up in smoke. Meanwhile, Fran speaks with the authorities because he thinks that Lisbeth might try to find him now. The woman he speaks with assures him that they'll protect him, though. Elsewhere in the city, Lisbeth manages to catch Michael in an elevator to his office, and she tells him about what happened with her job. He's not too sure about helping her, though, and she disappears again. Ed, on the other hand, is dead set on his mission. Shortly after he lands, Ed is taken to speak with the same woman that spoke with Franz. 
and he finds out that they know about the stolen tech. She assures him that if he's caught doing anything other than tourist things, he'll be sent back to Washington on the first available flight. Meanwhile, Lisbeth goes to meet with a friend to get some gear and patch herself up. She finds out that the guys that stole the software from her are going after Franz next, and authorities have moved him to a safe house. That night, Ed goes to check on Lisbeth's apartment, or at least what's left of it. He finds out that Lisbeth is the one that took the software, and he knows that she's watching him. Lisbeth, on the other hand, is setting up to go get Franz, and she sets up cameras to keep an eye out for the masked men. In a hotel bar, Michael meets up with the deputy, and he tries to convince her that she should be looking for the masked men instead of Lisbeth. I love how Michael thinks he's smooth enough to just tell a whole security agency who they should or shouldn't be after. Yeah, forget about her, this is the guy, and you're welcome! She obviously blows him off, and he goes to investigate himself. He notices the man has a tattoo of a spider, and he gets a match on another man with the same tattoo. When he goes to question the man about it, the man brings him to the back to explain that it actually isn't a tattoo, it's a scar. He tried to do some business with the man in the past, but he was a little too greedy. Ah, no, I mean, it looks really cool how they did it, but the idea of how it happened just makes it much harder to look at. I'd say that this warning was well received, but we know he won't back down. That night, Michael texts Lisbeth about the spiders, and she calls to find out more. When he asks her if she wants him to come over, she hacks his webcam to see Erica's there, and she simply tells him no. Meanwhile, Ed's going around town to find out as much as he can about Lisbeth. He eventually gets in touch with the woman that was sharing Lisbeth's bed, and he convinces her to give him the phone she uses to get in touch with Lisbeth. The next morning, Lisbeth has been up all night to keep an eye on the apartment Franz is staying in, and she gets a text from the girl's phone. After she responds, Ed triangulates her location and hurries over to get her. Lisbeth is alerted to a presence, but it turns out that she's already prepared for this and rerouted him to a crappy apartment instead. Lisbeth ends up getting her food she ordered, and she goes back to watching the monitors. The next part shows how cruel the bad guy is. We find out that it's actually Mr. Holster, and he actually brings the cops coffee before shooting them. They didn't even get to taste it. I can't do anything without my coffee, let alone get shot. At least let him get a sip! Once Lisbeth notices Mr. Holster on the camera, she hurries over to try and catch him. Once she makes it upstairs, she runs into Franz and his son, but she's quickly ambushed by Mr. Holster. Mr. Holster ends up injecting her with something that renders her helpless, gets her hand on a pistol, and uses her own hand to shoot Franz before he takes the sun and leaves her there. Lisbeth can feel her heart come to a stop, and she grabs a bunch of prescription medication, grinds it up, and snorts it to get her heart rate back up enough to crawl out of the apartment. Lisbeth makes her way to the dead officer's car, pulls his body out and hops in. After she starts tracking Mr. Holster's license plate, she takes off after him. After catching up, she hacks into the car's system and deploys the airbags. This knocks out the men in the front, and she gets the boy to go with her. As they go to drive off, Mr. Holster wakes up and riddles the car with bullets. Lisbeth is a quick thinker though. Well, that's one way to make sure you lose a tail. Just call the police at this point. Where else are they gonna go? When Lisbeth looks across the gap, she finds a woman in red staring back at her, and she goes back to get the car started. Once her and August get to a nearby parking garage, they ditch the bullet-ridden car and go for a much sportier look. They eventually get to an abandoned facility, and Lisbeth tries to get the answers to the riddles out of him. Elsewhere, Michael turns on a news report that tells the lie of Lisbeth killing Franz. At the crime scene, Ed gets arrested for showing up at a crime scene, and Lisbeth and August sit down to have a nice quiet game of chess. He quickly wins, and Michael shows up to meet with Lisbeth. When Lisbeth goes to take August to lie down, he tells her the answer to the question. When Lisbeth goes to talk to Michael, he confirms that the woman in red is actually Camilla. Michael did not get enough credit in the first film, and they definitely changed him in this one. He's like a lost puppy the entire time we follow Lisbeth. I feel like he's paying attention to Lisbeth's every move more than I am. After deciding that they need a way to get August home and safe, she decides to go get Ed out of the airport. After she casually walks through the airport, she leaves a suitcase in the middle of the floor that's soon picked up and taken to be inspected. I'm sorry, in what world would airport security not find this suspicious? A random suitcase left in the middle of the floor is filled with dildos and a cell phone. This screams danger. Soon, the phone hacks into the airport system, and she draws almost all of the police out of the security office. The last one she locks up in a cell with the other suspects. Lisbeth helps Ed make his way out of security, and she calls him to a specific meet spot where a phone's waiting for him. They talk about terms, and he eventually agrees to take August back to the States where his mother is. 
Back at the abandoned facility, August gets a phone call from his dead father's phone, and he answers it. Obviously, the bad guys are using this call to triangulate his location. And when Lisbeth gets there, she immediately notices that something's off. She goes to check on August, but she finds Camilla and her men waiting for her. Now that's what an awkward family reunion looks like. Lisbeth even tells her to just shoot her, but obviously that doesn't happen. Instead, Lisbeth throws herself and Michael out a door, and it was like a bad case of deja vu. The two of them end up meeting at her friend's apartment where Ed's waiting as well. Lisbeth activates the tracker she gave to August, and she realizes that they're taking him to her childhood home. The four of them get ready to infiltrate the house, and each of them has their part to play. Lisbeth, of course, is the one to go inside. She hacks her friend into the security system, and she takes out whatever resistance she finds along the way. While Michael's picked up by the deputy that's questioned everyone, he realizes that she is actually the buyer of the software. She wants to keep in what she thinks are responsible hands. Back in the house, Camilla's waiting for Elizabeth to make it to her, and she's wearing a gas mask and holding the tracker that Elizabeth gave August. Sure enough, gas starts to fill the room Elizabeth follows the signal to, and men barge in to take her. She takes a gas mask from the first guy, and I'm wondering where to get light-up gas masks like these. Granted, it's terrible in a stealth situation, but they'd still be pretty handy. After Lisbeth is overtaken, Camilla comes in, takes off Lisbeth's gas mask, and makes her breathe in the gas that knocks her out. They bind her and take her to August, and Camilla assumes that she can talk some sense into him. After showing that they're holding Michael captive, Lisbeth tells August to tell them, and the deputy gets ready to take control. At least Camilla's nicer than the coffee killer, Mr. Holster. She at least had the common courtesy to come for her before poking her. He could learn a thing or two from her technique. Later, Lisbeth wakes up when Camilla vacuum seals her in a latex suit. After a depressing monologue about what their father did to Camilla after Lisbeth escaped, Camilla says goodbye, and everyone's getting ready to be executed. Just then, Lisbeth's friend gains access to the security system, and he starts to take them out one at a time with the help of Ed on the sniper rifle. Lisbeth breaks out of her latex prison, and she picks up a gun to go after Camilla who's made it to a car. Camilla's driver stops paying attention to the road for a split second, and they crash after hitting Mr. Holster who was in the street. When Lisbeth catches up to the car, she notices that Camilla isn't there, and she chases after her until they come to a cliff. After trying to defend the past to Camilla, Camilla finally explains that she felt hurt, because Lisbeth helped all those other women over the years, but she never tried to save her. Lisbeth explains that she couldn't stand the thought of going back to her father to save her, and she turns the blame on Camilla for choosing him all those years ago. Well, that would be enough to make anyone jump in that situation. When you find out that your lifelong hope never came true because of your decision, I'd say that's enough to send anyone into a huge guilt trip. Later, police arrive to take the survivors, and Ed finds out that Lisbeth deleted the program. After some time, Michael makes another article about Lisbeth, but he decides to leave Lisbeth in the past. Lisbeth goes back to her childhood home to say goodbye, and she sets it ablaze. And with that, the credits roll. While I'm still disappointed in the cast change from the first one to this one, this was still a very enjoyable movie. I can't say that I know how the books go or even the original trilogy with Numi Rapace, but after watching this, I'm definitely going to be watching them soon. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this one. Comment what you think I should watch next, and I'll see you in the next video.